You know, one, one of the great things that God has given to us, a, a gift that, that God has given to every one of us, is, is the gift of imagination. The ability to uh, see things in our minds and to create mental pictures. And I'm not talking about visu 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 uh, what, visualization. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about mind over matter. That, that's not anything that I'm talking about. I'm talking about in the spirit realm, the things that God wants to do. And, and he gave us that. He gave us the ability to dream. Children have the greatest imaginations in the world. You were once one of them, but kids, they're great imaginers. I mean, they, they, can, they can play. I, I asked to have Selena. Selena is my little jitterbug. And uh, I, I asked to have Selena brought in. Not yet, sweetie. And she was asking me. I went down there a moment ago. She said, well, I, she said, why am I here? Or Pat said, she wants to know why she's here. And, and she said, wow, why am I here? What do you want? You know? And uh, I said, well, I want you to preach today. She looked at me like, I, but she's an imaginer. She comes out to the house. She has a, in fact, brought it from Lori's mom, a little, a little stool that we got when we were selling some of your stuff and have a little bench that we got. And she sits at that. That's her office. And every once in a while, I'll, I'll hear her talking. And I'll ask her, who you're talking to? Well, she's just talking to whomever because she has a great imagination. The other day, she came and she made a menu for us for uh, St. Patrick's Day. And by the way, anybody have any corned beef and cabbage? Nobody? How many had corned beef and cabbage? Raise your hand. Oh, that's good. Pat and I did. In fact, Shannon made corned beef and cabbage, and it was the best. Wow, it was good. Oh, but children have great imaginations. All of us have imaginations because God created us to be creative. God, God made us in his image and gifted us so that we would have thoughts in our mind of spiritual things as well as physical things that God wants to accomplish in our life. I mean, we wouldn't have airplanes today if it wasn't for the Wright brothers. Is that correct? We wouldn't have electricity if it wasn't for Edison. We wouldn't have cars if it wasn't for Henry Ford. And there are a whole lot of things that, that they one day saw, and yet the reality of that took time to come into being because they saw it. And so I could go on and on with those who've had imaginations, the gift that God put in their life. I could, I could tell you of a whole lot of people in all of, all of life, and we'd be here the whole morning. But the question that I really have for you this morning is, how are you using the gift of imagination that God has given to you? How are you using it? One of my favorite scriptures is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more. Get that. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we all can ask or imagine. He gives more, greater than, more than that what we can ask or imagine. How? According to the power that is at work within us. <laughs> Boy, you need to get that. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, this morning's message, I want to show you how imagination and faith work together. This this whole series of messages, I've got about two to go, are all dealing with faith, that, that our faith would be elevated to believe God for things that, that some of us have discounted and said, that, that's impossible. And I want to elevate your faith. The Holy Spirit does it. I want to suggest it. That the Holy Spirit would ignite something within you to believe 
for impossible things. That your imagination and your faith would come together for the abundant things that God wants to bring into your life. Abundant blessings that God has already purposed in heaven, planned for your life before you were ever born. He's just waiting for you to enter into it. Here's point number one. Write it down. Your imagination shapes your life. In other words, the way you think is going to affect the way you feel, and the way you feel is going to affect the way you act. I'll say it again. The way you think is going to affect the way you feel, and the way you feel is going to affect the way you act. Now, you think about that for a moment, and you'll find out it's true all the time. It's how you think. Proverbs 23, 7, out of the New King James says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So as you think, so you are. You think negative, you're going to be a negative person. You think positively, you're going to be a positive thinking person. If you can in yourself believe for the impossible, impossible things will begin to happen. Things you never thought possible will take place. You said, I, I thought I could never get out of this rut that I'm in. I, 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 I never thought that I could get out of this depression that I'm in. I never thought that, that I could ever have things in my life. My, my finances would get in all. I never thought that was possible. Well, as long as you think it's impossible, it'll be impossible. If you say, I can't, you can't. If you say, I can, you can. Because how you think has to do with your faith to believe for that which God wants to do in your life. God wants to give you breakthrough. God wants to change the circumstances of your life. God wants his kids to walk as a light in a dark world. And I mean, if we are overwhelmed by the world, how is the world going to want what we have? When the world sees us walk in victory, they're going to want victory. If they see us having answers to sickness and disease and marital problems, financial problems, if they begin to see that, they're going to want it. They're going to say, I want to serve that same Jesus. But if the Jesus we show them can't do it, why do they want him? Proverbs 20. Proverbs 4, excuse me, Proverbs 4, 23 out of the NIV says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. In other words, be careful how you think because your thinking is shaping your life. That's what that scripture says. It says, above all else, guard your heart. Why? For it's the wellspring. It, it, it's who you are. It's shaping who you are. Life is coming out of you according to that which you are guarding in your heart. That's why I go back to Ephesians 3.20, which tells us that there is a power that is at work in us that activates our imagination and our faith so that we can believe for the bigger and better that God said he would give us. He told us in his word that he would restore what the canker worm has eaten from us. Some of us have had things stolen from us that should never have been taken from us. Oh, it could have been bad living. I understand that. We could, we could have been a homeless person out on the street, could have had everything in the world, and now we're broke. What did I hear the other day? Someone, a, a sports star, made $180 million and have $12,000 in the bank. That's all that's left. I, I, can, I can tell you that that person right now is thinking back over all the things that were stolen out of, out of that person's life and, and wondering how could I have done it differently. What I'm talking about is how you think, how you imagine, how you take that faith that is at work in you is what's going to change who you are and what's going to happen. Number two, imagination and faith are partners. Imagination and faith are partners. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of that which we do not see. 
Listen, I know that I'm going to heaven. I don't have any doubts about that. How many, how many here are going to heaven? I'll tell you, it's a better choice than the other. If I had to choose, I would choose to go to heaven. I would never want to choose to go to hell. But I've never been to heaven. I have no idea what heaven is going to look like except in my mind. And you know what I see when I allow my imagination to work? I see mansions. I see streets of gold. I see smiles and love and reunion. And I, I see flowers that are beyond imagination. I, I see grass that greener than anything I'd ever thought. I see all that because heaven is going to be so wonderful. But, but you know what else I see? I see right in the center of heaven, Jesus. I have never seen Jesus, but one day I'm going to see Jesus face to face. And one day I'm going to see that which I imagine him to look like. I'm going to find out what he really looks like. My, where Pat and all the Peru team were down with Gail and Bruce in Peru, they always tell the story about the person who goes to heaven. And when they meet Jesus, Jesus is going to say to them, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, I want to say muy bien, but that's, huh? Yeah, I know that. That's not the right word. Uh, boy, I just slipped my mind. Now, I'm not getting old. Some of you just thought that and said, oh, yeah, 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 there's something setting in. No, 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 it just got too much on my mind. It's going to say, uh, buenos dias, hermanos and hermanas, which means uh, a good day, good, good day, brothers and sisters. In other words, what they're saying is Jesus is going to be Hispanic. Some of you don't believe that, do you? I can tell by how you laugh. I, I don't know what Jesus is going to look like. I don't know what he's going to be like, but I have an imagination of what he's going to look like. And of course, we got all the images of what he looks like, and who knows? Who knows exactly what Jesus looked like? Some of us in this room need to activate our faith. To believe for all that that God wants to make happen inside of our life. Number, number, number three. Where am I on number two? Am I on number three? Is that where I'm at? Oh, number two? Oh, three. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hang on. I'm all right. Let, let me read Hebrews 11, 1 out of the Living Bible. It says, what is faith? Faith is a confidence assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is a certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we can't see it up ahead. See, I, I have physical eyes, and with physical eyes I can see things physically. I, I, can, I can see you, and what a sight. But, but then there are other eyes that God has given me that, that see into the spiritual realm, see the things that God wants to create and do in my life. When, when I... When I look in my spiritual eyes, some things that I do see, and, that, and Josh, I see you, and I see Trisha back there, and I see Larry over here, or wherever Larry's at. I, I, I just see you getting up out of, out of that and, and, and walking and running. I can see that. I don't know if you can see it. I can see it. Do you see it, Josh? Yeah. I, I'm sure Trisha does. See it, sees it in, in the day when it's ready, when the time is right, to get up and start walking. And I, I want you, if, if you're in that area where you need a breakthrough, where you need something to happen, begin to say, Lord, help me to see what you want to do. Help, help me to see my, my body walking again. Help me to see my, my heart just working the way it ought to work. Help, help, me, to, help me to see my heart to see my marriage coming back into the place that it ought to be. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but 
and what is unseen. That's what Paul said. He said, we don't, we don't, look, at, we don't look at circumstances and say that's the way it is. When I, when I look at this world, it's a mess. But if I can really look right, I can believe that God is about to do an unbelievable thing on the face of the earth. And God is about to pour out his spirit in, 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 in unbelievable ways. And I can see that. And, and what Paul is saying out of, out of 2 Corinthians, he said, don't look at those things you see. Look at what you can't see. For what is seen is only temporary, but what is not seen is eternal. So what does that mean? That means this building we worship in today is one day going to deteriorate and it's going to be dilapidated. Somebody's going to come in and push it down into the ground and bury it. But I can tell you one thing that will last forever, and that's Jesus. He isn't going to change. God isn't going to change. His, his word is not going to change. His promises are not going to go away. They're eternal. They're, they're forever. And you can trust in them and you can believe in them. Number three, let God enlighten your mind. Let God enlighten your mind. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Are, are you getting anything out of this? Come on, open your mind. Let, let God begin to open it. Let, let's, let, let's, turn, let's, let's turn this place into Blue Roof Miracle Center. You can do better than that. Let's turn this into Blue Roof Medical Center. No. <laughs> let, let's turn this into Blue Roof Miracle Center. Paul says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart be enlightened. Why? In order that you may know the hope to which you've been called. I'll tell you, God has something bigger and better for every person in this room. He's just waiting for us to get moving. I take you back to the scripture out of Proverbs. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your heart, your mind, where your dreams and your imaginations come from. May your heart be opened to see the plans that God has already designed for your life so you can walk in that plan and that purpose for God. Glory. Proverbs 28, 18 says this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I'm going to tell you, God's going to give us new vision in this house. There's new vision coming. You're going to see it in life groups. You're going to see it. We're going to have a next step program is coming. You're going to see it so when a person comes to Christ, there's going to be a next step for their life. When a person comes to visit this church, there's going to be a next step so they can get into ministry. There's going to be a way for everybody to have an opportunity to serve Jesus Christ in this house. It's coming. It's coming. It's going to be here. A couple of months, you're going to see it all put into being. You'll be able to see with your eyes what I'm seeing right now inside of my spirit. Because, because we need vision. Because without vision, people perish. People just sit there and say, Pastor, when are you going to get with it? When are you going to give us some direction? When are you going to lead us forward? See, if you go back to Ephesians 3.20, it says he wants to do immeasurably more than whatever you can ask or imagine. Immeasurably more. How? By the power that is within you. It's already there. By faith you unlock it. By faith you say, yes, I can. Lord, you're calling me to do that? Yes, I will. And God will begin to take you and will walk with you. He won't leave you. He won't abandon you. He won't make a fool out of you. I like what the Living Bible says. Now glory be to the God who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would even dare to ask or ever dream of infinitely. Beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, and hopes. Imagine that. Not limited. We don't serve a limited God. 
But there, there are those in this room, you have no idea what God wants to do in your life. No idea whatsoever. None. Some of you are only living out a fraction of the life that God purposed for you to live. So much greater, so much more powerful. Take you places you've never been before. Put you in, 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 in contact with people you never thought you'd know in your whole life. That you can bless people, that you can impart into people, that you can, can inspire them to have the insight for the great things of God. See, when I, when I think big, I'm using faith to allow it to happen. And that's where I'm at right now. I, I, I really am. I'm at the place where I really believe something big is about to happen. Anybody with me? Something big is about to happen. Something is going to take place that's beyond anything we've ever imagined. Far greater, far better. Write this down. Write it down. Let the size of my God, write it down. Let the size of my God determine the size of my goal in life. Let the size of my God Determine the size of my goal in life. If God is, is, is as big as you think he is, don't limit him. Don't, don't hold him back. I mean, I mean, if God could, could by one word speak into existent land and seas and animals and trees and all of these things just by his word. If he could just pick up some dust and, and speak into that dust and create a man like you and I who are made in his image and likeness, imagine what he can do in you if you'll just believe him with faith for that which is already at work in your life. You hear me? See, it's not the size of your gifts. Don't, don't ever think you are, 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 are so gifted. It's God's gift that's in you that's working to create the greatness of your life. Number, number five. Oh, number four. How did I get over there? Oh, God's dreams are bigger and better. God's dreams are bigger and better. Far better. How do I know that? Because he told us that in Ephesians 3.20. He says he's able to do immeasurably more than whatever I can ask. Just take that home and this week meditate on that scripture. Put it, on, put it right on the mirror in your bathroom. Just stick it up there and meditate on it and say, you know what? God wants to do immeasurably more than whatever I can ask or imagine. And then be, begin to believe it in faith and watch what will happen. Watch what will happen. Go to number five. Fight the enemy of imagination. What, what, what's the enemy of you stepping out in faith to do the work of God on this earth? Doubt and fear. All, all of us, all of us, all of us hate the fear of failure. <laughs> that, that's why most Christians don't testify to another person because we're afraid they're going to reject us. Or we're going to ask them and tell them about Jesus Christ and they don't respond and we feel like we're a failure. And what, what happens? The longer we stay in that place, the older we get, the more stubborn we get. And we just live in the present. We just accept what is. We never move on to that. See, it takes courage to move to the impossible. And, and you know when courage functions? Courage functions when we come face to face with our fears. Because it takes courage to move through your fear. It, it takes courage. It takes courage to talk to someone that you really love about Jesus Christ. You don't want them to go to hell. 
but you don't say anything because you're afraid to. Because you don't want them not to love you. You don't want them to think you're a kook. But when you weigh the options of doubt and fear that holds you in bondage and that person go to hell, which would you rather be delivered from? I would rather be delivered from my fears and my doubts so that I can at least give a person an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ. Now, why did I bring Selena in here? Selena, come here. She's my little jitterbug. You ever watch her worship? Oh, my goodness. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. How are you today? Good. <laughs> You still love your papa? Yeah. How much? A lot. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, let's get you out here where everybody can see you. Now, now here's what happened. Where's Shannon? Are you there, Shannon? Where? Oh, there you are? Well, I didn't say I wanted you to come up here. I just want to know where you were. The other day, the other day, Selena was talking to her grandma. Well, uh, what is it? Nana. Nana. Shannon really is her grandma, but she doesn't want to be called grandma. She wants to be Nana. Is that right? Yeah. What What did you say to her the other day? Do you remember? Be mean. Huh? Be mean. What do you mean? Well, you, uh, you probably forgot, but she said she said to her grandma. Her nana. She said, Nana, I'm going to start calling you grandma. It's time you get over your fear. <laughs> uh, how old are you? Seven. Seven years of age. And she can understand that there are people who get bound in their fears and don't move beyond where they're at. And I'm telling you, if this church is going to go where it needs to go, you and I are going to have to get over our fear. There, there are people that ought to be in this house this morning that aren't here. And some of you need to pick up the phone and not be afraid of what you hear on the other side of the phone. There, there are people that have left here that aren't going to church. They're just sitting out there. And we need to go and say to them, you know what? We love you. And you're welcome back. Come on home. It's time to get over our fear. Thank you, Selena. I love you. So when you see Shannon up here on a Sunday morning, you know it's a grandmother ministering to you. <laughs> I, I, I challenge every person in the room, let, let's, get, let's get out of this rut. Let, let's move beyond our fears and let's enter in to the place that God wants us. Let's, let's ignore our insecurities. You say, oh, pastor, it's not that easy. It's not that easy until you have a breakthrough. And when you have a breakthrough, then God begins to set you free to be everything he intended for you to be. And, and, and another thing Selena said to her grandma one day, her grandma was getting ready for church and running a little late. And uh, Selena's out there waiting and she walks into her grandma and she says, Grandma, you're running late. You better get to stepping. <laughs> and, and, and you know what I want to say to you this morning and me? We better get to stepping. We, we, better, get, we, we, better, we, better, we better get out of this, this thing we're in, and we better get to stepping because God's got something out there just waiting for him to bring it forth and to happen. He's ready. And this morning, I, I, I want to... I want to invite every person, and I understand it's 1155, but that's all right. That's all right. If the Holy Ghost wants to come into this place and just, just do his thing and, and take our lives and reshape them and make them and have us walk.
out of here in the plan of God. Listen, some of you are sitting there, sitting there, and people are going to hell. People are in bondage. People are frustrated. Young people who are so caught up in, in, in drugs and in pills. Frustrated. They, they, they don't know. And they'll never know until the church comes to light where the only light the darkness of this world will ever see. When Jesus comes back, too late. Too late. James chapter 1, verses 5 and 8. Stand to your feet, would you all, this morning, please? Stand to your feet. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this this morning. If you're ready to get out of the rut, you can start moving right now. Just come up here and say, Pastor, this is it. I, I am, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enter into that place. I'm going to allow the Lord to enlighten my mind to believe for the things of God that he has planned and purposed for my life. I'm not going to stay here anymore, bound by other things. James says in, in 1, 5, and 8, he says, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should, he should ask God. Who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will give it, be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who believes is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think that he receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. But boy, if you're ready to get out of that, say, God, I just want the mind of Christ. Take the gift of imagination and dream, quicken it, and then help me by the enlightenment of my mind to enter into it. If that's you, get out of your seat. Come on, just as fast as you can. Stand here and say, Lord, I'm ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready to be everything that God has created me to be. Come on, come on. Ought to be everybody in the house ought to step out of their seat. Say, Father, that's me. That's me. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care how poor you are. I don't care how overwhelmed you are right now. I just know that the Lord wants to set us free. Wants to again put back in the mind of the believers in the church. We are the most powerful force on the face of the earth. <laughs> Absolutely. There is no greater force than Jesus that lives in us. Let me tell you that. Bible says we have power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Can you imagine that? All of that is ours to have, and we're going to limit ourselves? No, no, I'm not going to limit myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush right. Pastor Ron, I, I, I know you don't like spotlight, but come here, just stand down here. I want to bring Jamie with you. But, but, You've got a group. You've written an awesome, awesome production for Easter. I mean, it's going to tell the story. I'm telling this story. <laughs> and, and I want the anointing of the Holy Ghost to be on that. I want this house filled with people that come and find Jesus Christ. That, that message, that, that production that morning, if you've got a loved one and you're afraid to say to them anything, don't be afraid to say I want you to come to church with me. It's Easter and I want to have family. I, I, I plan for family to come for Easter and we're, I want you all to go to church. Tell them that. And then let them come and, and let what, what God has put into Pastor Ron's heart to write. It is powerful. And let the anointing rest on it. Some of you that are right around here, just put your hands on them this morning. Right, come on, pray for him right now. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will empower this production. That it will be so powerful that it will not be people acting out a part, but it will be the Holy Spirit speaking to the heart of every person that's going to walk in that service on a Sunday morning. I pray, Lord, 
that as the director of this production, that you put a heart, your heart, right into to Ron. The Lord, when he leads that group, he leads it in the Holy Ghost and the fire of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God comes right out of that play, comes right out of that production, right into the heart of the hardest of hearts will be broken in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, I pray for every person in this room that says, I'm ready, I am ready, I'm ready. Lift your hands up, lift your hands up. Say, Lord, I'm, I'm lifting them up like a, like a surrendered person. I'm lifting them up and saying, Lord, it's time for me. It's time for me to be enlightened in my spirit, to believe for impossible things, to know that whatever I ask or imagine, you'll do immeasurably more than what I'm even thinking. What, what, what even the thoughts in my mind, you'll do greater than that. You'll do impossible things in my life. So I'm putting my hands right there in yours. I'm reaching right up to the heavens right now. Get them as high as you can. Say, Lord, I'm reaching for the heavens. I'm reaching for the heavens. I'm reaching for the answer of God. I'm, I'm reaching for the revival of the Spirit of God that is about to come to this house. I am reaching out for the wind of the Spirit of God that's about to blow over this congregation. I am lifting my hands and saying, Lord, come by your Spirit. Come and do your work in us. Hallelujah. 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 Enlighten my mind. Enlighten my mind. Take my thinking and put it into alignment with faith that I can take that which works inside of me and see it happen. I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, you go with every person right here this morning. You go with them. You lead them. You direct them. Lord, may we turn this world upside down. May this week be the greatest week we've ever had in our life. I'm praying right now for the one that needs a financial miracle in their life. I pray the spirit of poverty off of them. I pray the stinking thinking of the enemy, the doubt and fear that all goes along with it. I, I, I pray against that spirit in the name of Jesus. I, I pray for the one that is physically sick in their body, may, maybe been told it's bad. I pray that stinking thing and gone. And I pray the enlightenment of the Spirit of God to come into their being. The Lord, they begin to see the healing, the restoration, the power of God at work within their life. I pray, I pray for the one, the marriage that may be broken. The Spirit of God comes back. The thinking changes. The stinking thinking that, that's invaded would be gone so that life could come back. Because the Spirit has enlightened the mind to see the goodness of the Lord and work in that marriage, that home, that family. Lord, I, I pray this week there there be miracles that will happen in lives. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I pray the unexpected to come. I, I pray the unexpected to come this week. Somebody, somebody is going to reach out and say, Lord, this week there's going to be an expected blessing that's going to come into my life. Something I never expected is going to happen because I'm believing for it, because my God is able to do immeasurably more than whatever I can ask or imagine. And I'll praise you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. May the Lord go with you. Give you a great week. Give you a great week.